So this is a special episode of Frack the Cannon. Uh, no CG in it, but we have someone who has worked on Frack the Cannon behind the scenes. Uh, she was my intern at KMVT. Uh, she is going to Cadre now. She just graduated class of 2020 Los Altos. Yep. Kirsten Andrews, how are you doing, Mrs. Andrews? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. It's been a minute since I actually saw your face to face. I think the last time I saw you was in the studio for your show. Probably months and months and months ago, huh? <laughs> Was it that long ago? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, last it year. was. I haven't done my show for like a year, so. No, it hasn't. Has it? Yeah. Yeah, like last summer. Was it dog? Because I could have sworn I helped you after I got laid off. Anywho, I, I don't. Okay, wow. But yeah. all right, so. So, <laughs> so we'll just talk about a little bit going back to KVT just because I wanted to see what it feels like for you, uh, someone who's going through all this, someone who's still fairly young. Not that yeah. I'm that old. Don't disagree with me that fast. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um, what did you like about KMVT? Like, how, actually, no, let's start this again. How did you get involved with KMVT? How did you start volunteering? What got you into it? Well, let's see. Uh, I actually got involved through Nick Borda, another intern at KMVT. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, I've always had an interest in film stuff, always been attracted to the idea of using a camera. So... I went to one of our high school basketball games as a dancer. Like okay. I was on the dance team. I was there to perform at halftime. And I saw Nick, who I knew from my Spanish class, holding this huge camera. And obviously I was like, oh my God, like what is he doing? You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I go right up to him and I start talking about it, asking him about it. And he basically leads me to KMVT. Like the next day in Spanish, we keep talking about it. He was like, yeah, like, I'm really close to some of the people there. Like I could probably get you an internship. And I was like, that'd be so cool. So then after that, I applied for the internship, like through the online application. Right. John was the one that I like was in contact with. So he was kind of the person to do all that stuff. Um, And then I just started getting involved. I started crewing on stuff. I learned how to do sports through you. And then I also started getting involved with the summer camp. That's right. My first like paid part of it was doing the summer camp as like one of the interns there. And yeah, so John, yeah, John. Production, that one. Which one was that one? Kid studio production. That one. Yeah, that, that yeah. was, that's a lot of fun. It's very stressful. It's, yeah, that's uh, where I learned the control room. I remember I learned the control room along with the students. Like the first week there was when I learned the control room. Do you remember I, that? Do you remember when I like, do you want to direct? And you're like, oh, I'm gonna get directing. Yeah, yeah, also, yeah. I was gave you directing because I know I was so tired. I'm like, I don't want to direct. Yeah. I'm FK direct. <laughs> <laughs> I still have that picture. That was three years ago. Yeah, oh. something. Yeah, my fr- like my summer between my freshman and sophomore year. So have yeah. I loaned you, have I loaned you that? I, I, known me that long have i known you that long wow but i'm very proud of you you started as an intern but Uh then you became a producer on your you started directing on your own yeah started doing a lot more i'm like wow you are gonna go far she's gonna be she's gonna go very very far very so okay what was your favorite thing to do so i remember you saying oh yeah what was your favorite thing to do at kmbt i mean like i guess like crewing on shows and like i guess my show was just my favorite because i was the director and like i always had a passion for what i was talking about but also crewing on other people's shows was so fun like just being in the control room did you hear that i did hear that you were, you were, <laughs> um like who <laughs> whose show did you direct on besides mine cuz i'm a show what well, other favorite show to crew on i started like i just kind of responded to all the emails that was going out i did like valerie's fashion show or like aesthetic show that one I did Suzanne's music show for a while. I don't know. My Tune TV. I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah I did some of those. Um, and I just kind of started randomly getting involved. I remember Tyler used to call me in for like interviews. Like I did an interview with him once on camera or something like that. Okay. About like martial arts or something. Something I didn't really know about. Uh, you know what? I remember what that was. That was, I remember what that was. Because at KMBT, we have this, this after we, we, one of our studio programs, we teach the students, mostly adults, how mm-hmm. to use equipment. And I wanted them. You were the host because we couldn't get anyone. And you were interviewing him about about martial arts. Sure, oh yeah, like, something yeah. that I literally did like a topic I had no idea about. And I was like, okay, we're just gonna go with it. That's kind of yeah. So that's one of the fun things about working at a nonprofit, working at community access. You're like, you have to make it up on the fly. Exactly. And, 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 yeah. Definitely. If there's one thing that I learned from KMBT, it's how to adapt in any situation. Like that came first with the summer camps. Like you have dealing with kids in any situation, but especially with video production and huge expensive like, equipment, <laughs> you have to be able to adapt. Like I remember just like having to create things on the fly, like create games on the fly to keep them distracted. Right. Like, 
keep create like rules on the fly in order to keep things safe. You know what I mean? Like major rules. I was like, you guys didn't know about this, even though I made it up on the fly, like just to keep <laughs> things like contained. That was a huge thing. And then not only that, but like also in the control room, like all the time when I was directing, I'd like press the wrong graph graphic and I'd be like, okay, let's adapt to the situation, you know, like let's adjust to this, that type of thing. So that's let's definitely what I learned. I mean, you're like, oh, let's do it again. I remember one of my, one of the last things I directed at KMVT, one of our live big, my last big events, it was art, was it the art and wine? And you went out and you went to, to interview the... Yeah. yeah. That was oh, awesome. yes. I interviewed that important lady and it was like the first time I learned anything about her and I had to like learn all my stuff beforehand and prepare questions and stuff like that. Who was that lady? That's a very good question. <laughs> Who was, you, was it at, at the same time? Yeah, um, no, she was one of, she worked uh, at a, somewhere in downtown Mountain View, like something to do with police or something like that or like the community Oh, services. yeah, yeah, yeah. Was I still around with Katie Nelson? Is that familiar? That sounds familiar, but I'm not really sure who it was. I think I was working. I think you were there because it was the Art and Wine Festival. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you were the one directly working with me about that interview. There's, I think it was like Robin or Tyler or something. I don't know. That's something, that's something about but I remember yeah. that. And that's another situation where I had to adapt because like coming up with questions on the fly during an interview is scary, but like needs to be done. <laughs> it did, that's, yeah, that's something I learned too was uh, my first year at KMBT. I'm like, here, you're going to interview people. I'm, like, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing what now? Yeah, um, yeah, I know exactly. You're like, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> all right. So, what got you to directing, though? And what did you like? What do you like about directing? Okay, so I kind of I just wanted to start my sh like own show really bad, and I was trying to do it with Nick for a while because I was like, Nick has experience, you know, like we could collaborate. And then he just never really got on board with it. So then I just kind of took off, and I was like, Daily Smiles is what I want to do, which is just like positive news stories with like community interviews. So I kind of took off with that one. And just, I feel like just because I was so passionate about the topic I was talking about, it like right. made sense for me to direct. Like I didn't want to be on camera. I wanted to like run it the way I wanted to run it. So that's kind of why I did that. And then I just kind of fell in love with the whole aspect of directing. Like, I mean, I knew from like working with kids that it was like fun and stuff, but like directing your own show and having that creative vision and stuff like that is like so different. Like being able to bring in the graphics. That's also why I started doing technical directing as long, like as well as directing. Cause I wanted like control over it. I don't know. <laughs> like being able to like bring in my own graphics when I feel like it and like the music and everything. So that's kind of why I liked it. And then I also liked hyping up my anchors, <laughs> like being on the thing and being like, okay, let's go guys. Like we got this, like that type of thing, like being a leader in that way is really fun. So thank you. All right. So thank you for, so for those who don't know, explain what technical director is, because I know I just want, when I direct, I want I technical direct because I hate. Yeah. I'm not a fan of like, you're not going to as my head is, as, as my brain is going for this. So can you explain to what, what, what is a technical director? Kirsten? Technical directing. So you have the director who has the headset and they're giving all the commands. Like they start and stop the show. They do the music and everything. And then you have the technical director who's the ones like pressing all the buttons. So they're the ones that actually makes like stuff happen. Like they're the ones bringing in the actual graphics, changing the camera angles and stuff at the cue of the director. Right. So for me, it was way easier to just cue myself in my brain and then just press all the <laughs> buttons if that makes sense. But typically, especially when I was working with kids, I would give them instructions. So I'd be like, oh, like hold or like press here. Or, like let's do that. You know what I mean? That type right. of thing. And then they would be the ones pressing the buttons. And that's just good to learn also be able to like take instruction from someone. Uh, yeah, no, definitely. It, it, because it definitely, you're looking out. That's something that, that I learned too was like, all right, the shot is, as a technical director, when I was still volunteering at KMBT, I'm like, all right, that shot is not ready. But the director's saying, I'm like, that's not ready. So I'll be like, uh, let's wait. Yeah, 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 have, yeah. Have you ever done that for other shows? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, not as much with Daily Smiles, but with the kids. Like, I'd have people on camera just moving it. And I'm like, okay, we can't take camera two because camera two doesn't know what's going on. You know what I mean? And you just got to, again, adapt in those types of situations. <laughs> So I want to go back to Daily Smiles because when you pitch a show, I'm like, this is a cool idea. Yeah. And then John Chazini came out with his idea. I'm like, dude, my agent <laughs> came up with that show two years ago. Wait, wait, wait. So, Say that again? He came so out with his idea? When John Krasinski came out with his version of, of Daily Smiles called, called Good News, whatever. But it's it pretty much your show. But like, like yeah. No, I mean, for my idea for Daily Smiles, I think it's kind of like a basic principle that like the news just highlights a lot of bad stories just because okay. I get more attention. And honestly, it's kind of what's going on in the world, especially right now. But like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, but let's right not, now, let's not, let's not get into that. So but, right now, just yeah. to find, just find the date. Today is June 15th, it's, 2020. Yeah, so 2020. That's the key term, 2020. But... Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, I know for Daily Smiles, I just, I kind of wanted to bring to light like a bunch of positive news stories. And like something I have done is I kept track of this website called Good News and I would just like watch all their stories and they were so cute. And I was like, other people should like read this. So instead of just sending all the links to my friends, I created Daily Smiles (laughs) in which I created a script. I like found my favorite news stories from that month. I put it all in the script. I gave it to my anchors and I was like, read this. And then it it kind of just like took off from there. And I just kept adding like different positive stories. And then Mm -hmm. I also mixed in the community interviews because I thought it was cool to bring in different voices, especially because it got boring after just hearing someone read the news after a while. So I started um, separately filming these interviews like outside of the studio and then just rolling them in. And it would be with community members. So it would be like high schoolers that I knew, like friends of mine that were doing something cool. Like I interviewed someone who created a whole like STEAM organization in order to benefit undereducated and underprivileged kids. Mm-hmm. And that was really cool. I interviewed someone about her like swimming career that's about to take off, like stuff like that. I remember that. So that's something yeah. that, I, that I, I, would, I don't know what, I don't want to call you myself mentor, but I don't know what to call, call myself. Too. No, that mentor, you're my mentor. I've looked up to you all of KMVT. Like you were the person that started it for me and here we are like the only person I still talk to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I well, thank you, but yeah. no, no lie, K. I feel so. Everyone knows I call her K just because I, I. It's my nickname. It happened day one too. You were just like, I can't call you Kirsten. It's too long. Uh, we're going with K, and I just took off from there. That and sounds about right. Adapted it. I only get called K at KMBT. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is true. So that was something that I, that I that I was proud to see you grow as a producer director. Was like you were adding elements to your to your show. My experience. I'm like I'm like I kind of did that too, but. As you did it gradually, I did mine with all my charges. Like, no, we're doing green screen, we're doing Skype, we're doing roll-ins, we're doing picture roll-ins. But you, you gradually like did it. So yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, yes, Kay, she's doing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I remember my first show. It was just my one friend sitting there just reading the paper. And then the second one, I started bringing in graphics. And then the third one, I started bringing in video footage and the interviews and everything. So yeah, it definitely happened gradually. And then I started bringing in like another anchor in order for them to have like a back and forth conversation. And then by October, I was like making jokes and everything in my scripts. You know what I mean? Like having some cool transitions, like inserting like video clips from like friends of mine. Like it was really cool like, what it turned into. It really was. It really was. I, I, I have the pictures because I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. This is Kay, my intern. My yeah. I'm also directing these middle-aged men. <laughs> yeah that's another cool thing is like coming from like a younger like perspective it's really cool to have people like listen to you and take your authority seriously which is like probably another reason i really like directing especially daily smiles <laughs> the future is female ladies and gentlemen the future is female i'll say that <laughs> um i still have from dr who <laughs> um but that's that's all i just wanted to talk to you just because i haven't talked to you in a, in a long time since this and then because you were supposed to direct my show again but we haven't, because of the lockup, we haven't been able to, to have it. And you were supposed to be on the show, too, just to nerd out with us. I but. was looking forward to that. I wanted, I was ready to make fun of myself for not knowing anything about superheroes or any <laughs> of that stuff. Like, I wanted you to interview me and, like, ask me questions that I didn't know the answers to just to see what I came up with. You know what I okay. mean? So I'll, do that, funny. I'll do that right now. Before we have, we have to go pretty soon, right? I yeah. Right now. What is the name of the comic that Superman first appears in? like superman 101 i don't know <laughs> action comics number one. Oh, it came out 1938 number one yeah action comics number one okay yeah I, have no idea. <laughs> I had no idea i didn't even know it started with a comic <sighs> because i is new. i just thought it was like superhero the movie <laughs> <laughs> that's how i thought i started <laughs> <laughs> well that's funny all right so we're, we're going off track a little bit of what one to put i remember you telling me that the first marvel movie you saw was Spider-Man Homecoming? Mm-hmm. That, and, the, and the only reason why she saw that movie was because she was, she was finally going to direct my show. Like, I would be with you. Direct my show, direct my show, direct my show. I want you to direct my show. And you finally said yes after... After watching that movie and being exposed <laughs> to Marvel. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> but, no, but here's the thing. You're, you're very productive. You're very... You're very socially aware. You're very active in... in, in I don't want to call it social justice, but it is social justice. But yeah, I, I'm, I, as 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 a friend, I guess I, I guess saying mentor feels weird. But as 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 someone who's seen you grow, I'm very very proud of you, and you're gonna go far. You're gonna be a, you're gonna be a very strong woman, and like just keep it up, okay? Keep your nose clean, keep it's it so up, keep fun. that work ethic, keep that work ethic. Don't double book. <laughs> oh yeah, that was one of the first lessons I also learned. That's KMVT is the reason I have a calendar app. Like, not even gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> which is yeah which is good though but yeah well, i'm gonna miss you, you but yeah no okay thank you for joining us thank you for 
talking to me. Hopefully, we'll do this again more often. If you, again, if you need anything, let me know. Uh, and yeah. Yay. Hi, guys. I just, want, I just wanted to show, why don't well, let me do that again. I just wanted to show the world what an amazing woman you are, one of my favorite interns. That's right. I said it. One of my favorite interns ever. Hey. You, know who you, you know who you are. All righty. Well, again, thank you for coming, JK. Thank you for having fun. And then, again, thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you so Frack much off. for me.